But next, uh, when Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine, volunteer fighters rushed to the front line to defend their country. A whole nation was mobilized and Western aid and weapons poured in. Now, two years on, the headlines have switched to talk of frozen funding, ammunition shortages and problems recruiting soldiers. For Ukraine, the goal of liberating its territory hasn't changed. But as our Eastern Europe correspondent Sarah Rainsford now reports, the price is having to pay is rising all the time. These are the patrols many Ukrainian men now dread. Conscription officers like Pavlo hunting for draft dodgers. Ukraine needs a lot more soldiers, but they're not flooding to the front lines anymore. So some have to be caught and cajoled. Pavlo lost his arm near Bakhmut in a mortar attack. But he wanted to go on serving his country. So now he looks for other men who can still fight. There's a full-scale war, but it's still like people don't care. We need everyone to come together, like they did on the first day. Everyone was united then, like brothers. But when I ask about friends who've served with him, Pavlo tells me there's almost no one left from his company. Everyone's either injured like me or dead. When the Russians occupied Lilia's town, her son was captured and tortured. When Serhi escaped, he signed up to fight for Ukraine. He's now been badly injured, but his mother's afraid he'll recover and go back to the front. Serhi says his friends there need him. While he is in hospital, I can sleep calmly. When he is on the front line, I can't sleep. So I really shouldn't say this. I'm glad he is not there at the front. Every Ukrainian town now has cemeteries like this, filled with the soldiers honored by their country as heroes and mourned deeply by their families. Vladislav was killed by a mine near Bakhmut. He was 22. Ina hasn't put his photo on the grave yet because she can't quite accept her only son has gone. But she's proud of him. I believe my son died doing the right thing. When I ask about those who avoid signing up, Ina doesn't judge them. Do you think my son wasn't afraid? I was afraid too when he went. Everyone is afraid of dying. But maybe being enslaved by Russia is scarier. She calls it a fight to protect Ukraine's freedom. But the cost is growing. Sarah Rainsford, BBC News, Cherkasy.